we were aware of the risk that the way this was designed created not just the incentive for banks to underreport, but gave them the opportunity to underreport, right. and that was a problem. That was Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner down in D.C. in Congress today just a little while ago talking about the LIBOR scandal, what the New York Fed knew, when they knew it, and what they might or might not have done about it, what they should have done about it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Market Hub. I am Paul Vigna. We're starting in D.C. today. We're starting Te Secretary, Tre Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner down in Washington testifying about financial stability, risks to the economy, and, of course, that LIBOR scandal. Joining us is Sudeep Reddy, who's going to tell us, give us the details on this one. Uh, Sudeep, have we learned anything really this morning? We learned, Paul, that uh, the Treasury Secretary is being very careful in how he answers this question uh, because from uh, his perspective, the New York Fed, which he headed at the time, uh, learned of this LIBOR problem early, tried to do something about it by sending a long list of recommendations to the British regulators and uh, did further uh, research into it at the time. Uh, and kind of what he's trying to say is that we knew about it, but we acted early and he's trying to push off any question from Congress that they didn't act even earlier or do more than just uh, talking to the British about it. Right. Well, uh, did he get, he, he's in front of Congress. Did he get any questions from Congress about this? What was their reaction to that statement of his? The, the, he's getting a lot of questions uh, right now as we speak uh, to Congress, uh, from Congress. Uh, there's a lot of disbelief um, building up in Congress that even though the New York Fed might have been able to uh, identify these problems and send recommendations, the big question is why didn't they do even more? When uh, the, the Fed notified the Bank of England in, in, in this problem, and the Bank of England didn't really do much about it, why didn't the New York Fed follow up even further? And the, the broader question is that the Fed, of course, is a bank regulator, and some of the banks involved in LIBOR, are, uh, in, in setting of LIBOR, are overseen by the New York Fed. Um, and by the Fed uh, overall, and why didn't they, uh, those regulators in the U.S., do more about these banks? And so there's a lot of these big questions about the Fed's responsibilities here are reemerging, and uh, Congress is probably going to be pushing hard, particularly Republicans are going to push hard on this, this issue. Right, and the reason this is important right now is because his testimony is actually a scheduled testimony about because he is now head of the Financial Oversight Council. I'm getting the, the title of the, the board wrong. But he's part of the Dodd-Frank reform. This is a testimony about the financial stability of the, of the system. Uh, what's changed? I mean, that's the real question, right? What's changed in the few years that would prevent something like this now? That is the big question that is not only going to, that not only being discussed in the finance world, obviously, but also in Congress and going into the fall. Because in Washington, the the big uh, debate is about the size of government and regulation and the uh, Dodd Frank legislation. And Geithner, as head of the Financial Stability Oversight Council, is uh, as the chairman of that group, is trying to point out that they're moving forward on addressing a lot of these risks in the banking sector. But the, a lot of this is revealing that. Uh, Despite new powers, it's not clear that uh, the Fed even used its old powers properly. And th this is going to continue on for the, the coming months as they implement Don Frank on whether the Fed did enough. And, of course, he talked about a lot of other things at this hearing as well, well beyond LIBOR. Right. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Let's talk about some of those things. He was uh, issuing a warning about the risks to the economy, right? I mean, we all know what these risks are, but what did he have to say this morning? Well, uh, Tim Geithner puts at the top of the list the risk from Europe, which is fairly obvious to anyone who's been uh, watching markets. And uh, alongside that, he puts the fiscal cliff risk from the United States. And what he's trying to send the message about uh, is that Congress uh, can do something and needs to do something, even though he really knows that it's incredibly unlikely that Congress will do anything until after the, after the election. And so part of this, this is, is uh, opportunity to testify before the uh, congressional recess in August when the uh, attention will shift even more to the election. He's trying to lay out the notion that what Congress has done before has been uh, dangerous and created problems for the economy and could do so again. Uh, and he's try trying to lay the groundwork for action after the uh, elections and kind of shift the political game a little bit. But of course, he's also trying to signal that Europe is a problem and that's weighing down the economy uh, quite significantly right now. Uh, City, quickly, do you, do you get any sense that Congress is getting that message? I mean, Bernanke's gone up there and delivered it. Geithner's up there and delivered it. It's being talked about left and right. Do you get any sense that Congress is getting that message? 
there are a lot of people in Congress who do get this message, so we shouldn't paint everyone uh, uh, in the same way. There are a lot of people who realize, uh, Democrats and Republicans, who realize that the fight over the debt ceiling last year was incredibly damaging, but uh, there's still a very, very large group who are standing on uh, what they consider principle, who don't really think that, uh, that the, the fiscal cliff uh, should be ad addressed in the way that maybe the mainstream wants it addressed. Um, and they're pushing hard in the same way they fought on the debt ceiling. And uh, it's entirely possible we could relive this battle come uh, November or December.